thought about since I uh, first got this trailer kit from my brother is, is there a way to relatively easily lift the boat and frame off of the trailer, get the trailer out from underneath it, set the frame back down on the ground. I don't think I want to try to, you know, permanently suspend it like I do Nomad here. Since I replaced the Focus, which uh, could get full sheets of plywood in the back of with a golf wagon, which you can't, even more of a reason to see if I can find a way to do that, because then I could use this trailer as a normal flatbed. So, what I'm thinking is, there's the frame, and a two by fours go into the trailer at the stern, and here, uh, right at the front, and that's six foot five inch run. The boat is a little wider, especially up forward, so we need some spreaders, like on bigger cranes, to make sure that the whatever that is going to be doesn't rub on the, or compress uh, the gunnel of the boat and just a little bit of a mystery about how to make it work there's an ugly scrawl of a diagram but I'm thinking now that uh, we'll make steel uh, steel cable in plastic with some swages uh, that can loop around pick up the frame uh, below the boat, a block lag and screw eyed up into the ceiling. It's awkward you're thinking about being even a little boat trying to just pull on those things and then go over to the wall and cleat it somewhere. It's really awkward. So I think a better better system here is have another screw eye up into the ceiling, stand on a ladder and then just have a nylon strap with a come along. What I need to do is get the boat out of the way and go see if I can find where the joist would be. So what we need to do is pick a joist that would be roughly in the center of this space and then follow that line on the far side of the beam. See what kind of a anchor point we can make with a lag screw into the face and then you're gonna have to go don't like doing it that way but rather than cutting a hole in the drywall and putting a bolt through a joist just lag screw straight up in there it really shouldn't be that heavy to pick up the stern of the boat with everything out of it and another couple of lag screws to pick up the come along and anchor point the door needs to be able to come up because that's the whole point lift the boat up, take the trailer out. So that'll just work. Get as far forward as we can. And now, six foot five inch run from here. So we got four of these. One, two, three, four. And we'll see how they go in. That feels better. I think I hit a nail in this hole. I think the way this is going to have to go, if you start with a loop on one end, swage or fair rule or whatever it is, and then we have stoppers that will go underneath the uh, spreader and hold it in position. 
And the trick is, I think, you have to build it onto the spreader as it goes. So, something like... Okay, so we feed that up through there. This down through there. If I need a loop, I'll just probably hang it by the center. And then one more for the stern, same way. This will work as is. four pins out so in theory Sleep thinking about all the bad things that could happen if this hoist idea goes wrong. Got to get it up in the air pretty high to pull the trailer out from underneath it. And dropping from that height would be bad. So a lot of it worked, but I'm not happy. These come alongs. Really nervous about the strength of that strap. In theory, it's 500 pounds, and this is probably net near 200 divided in half. But it just felt bad. Looks bad. Uh, releasing them back down is really tedious with those things. And then another big problem is the way I've got it rigged. We're not going to be able to get it down onto the ground, which is my goal, is to have the wood frame actually set back down on the ground once the trailer's out from underneath it. So, uh, backpedaling. What I think I'm going to do is use that rope, if it's long enough, maybe uh, keep it in one piece, and come from uh, the bridles up through here, put another block here, and uh, bolt some big, two big hooks one for each of these lines and then tie loops I think periodically at convenient spots so you just pull down slide the, the the loop on the hook do the same with the other one so I, I think I'll feel better about that and I think coming straight down even though it's gonna be a little awkward if you can just hook a loop on there rather than trying to get it around a cleat or something Another uh, another bad thought I had was, since I didn't put a loop here, what if you get the boat suspended and for one reason or another it starts to go one way, <laughs> the boat's not uh, tied to the frame, it would just be really bad. So I had bought these guys as a potential way of adjusting, making adjustable loops on some of this cabling. I think what I'm going to do is clamp some on either side of the center and uh, with the rope tied around there, if it, if it wants to slide, if it wants to tilt, it should be enough to keep it in place. That should stop a 
rope knot from sliding one way or the other. I don't know, I'm starting to wonder whether this is ever going to be a good thing. I was amazed at how hard it was just to try to pick this up. The next step, I'm thinking I'm going to try to double up. I have a singleton here, a doubler there. I think the idea of having pre-placed loops and slipping them on one at a time is a good one. We are in the air. So if I wanted to, I could take the trailer out from underneath it. can't let it all the way down. I'm not sure you have to let it all the way down if I remember those jack stands. The back one, for some reason, I guess you're not pulling straight down on it, is easier. Uh, I think the key here is to let my weight hang on it, go past the hook, and it actually takes very little effort to hold it in the air. It's it's the hardest effort here is pulling straight down from that point. Uh, it looks a little odd, but I think it actually something I could do solo that I'm willing to, to endure in order to make dual use of this flatbed trailer, including uh, do some maintenance on it. It's a pain, they say, about every 120 miles to run around all these lock nuts. Um, there were a few that moved. And uh, it is certainly less of a pain to do it with the boat off of it and with the boat on, so.
I would call that success. A couple of more practice rounds and it'll get a little bit mechanical. I really think it's worth the hassle and trouble and multiple attempts. Fourth time. Thank <laughs> you.